Richard Tarnas is a CIIS professor emeritus and founding director of the Philosophy, Cosmology, and Consciousness graduate program. He was formerly the director of programs and education at Esalen Institute and is the author of The Passion of the Western Mind, a history of the Western worldview from the ancient Greek to the postmodern, widely used in universities. His next book, Cosmos and Psyche, Intimations of a New Worldview, received the Book of the Year Prize from the Scientific and Medical Network and is the basis for the documentary series Changing of the Gods. He is a past president of the International Transpersonal Association and served for many years on the Board of Governors for the C.G. Young Institute of San Francisco. And now it is my honor to turn it over to Rick. Greetings. Hello, everybody. Uh, once again, here we are, uh, the beginning of a new new year and um, another uh, continuing drama that we are all participating in. And um, uh, I, I used to do these archetypal state of the world weather reports uh, back in Namaste Hall for, for quite a few years at CIS. Uh, certainly I remember back in 2001 after 9-11, but I, I, I started this particular series, uh, as some of you may remember, in uh, the spring of 2020 when we were in the depths of the, um, I mean, the full lockdown had happened with, with the COVID pandemic. And uh, the world transits were so relevant to um, understanding what was happening at that point that uh and it was so helpful to know about them uh to see the larger picture to get the deeper implications and so forth um uh, that i just i felt it would be worth to sh share with you then and uh for those interested and then i again gave talks like this in 2021 and and 2022 um i didn't do one last year that was my final um, semester teaching at, at, after 30 years here at, at CIS. And I, um, oh, let me just fix this camera here a little bit. So it's situated. There we go. Um, I, I think, um, I would, I was teaching a course that was a kind of an archetypal history of, of Western civilization, um, and it was demanding and I really wanted to give my all to it. And uh, so I didn't take a break from it to, to do uh, a, an annual weather report with you, but here I am this year. Uh, and so, as I don't have to tell you, um, the state of the world could hardly be more volatile right now and uh, uncertain and so much is in the balance, depending on so many diverse factors and people uh, and decisions that are in play right now. Um, it's it's been a pretty relentless several years, and here we are uh, once once again where it, it's not really letting up, um, and perhaps it won't uh, let up in terms of our larger global situation. We obviously are all aware in this community of the um of the of the tremendous um the climate crisis the, the the global ecological situation if we human beings could resolve our uh, social political um, economic issues and justice uh issues and so forth and come into a decently compassionate relationship with each other and with the with uh the rest of the world that would be one really big step uh and at, at the same time we've got a whole earth community that we are also affecting and our relationship to it and our the 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 quality of our of our our mind and our hearts relationship to that larger earth community all the species of life all the um uh, land and waters and air that uh, are are part of our precious earth um, are are deeply influenced by us, this one species, and in many ways this this particular part of the species that 
is uh, identified with with modernity and everything that comes with that. So uh, in terms of what we can we can illuminate with uh, what we have today available to us, um, I mean, all of us mortal human beings see through a glass darkly, uh, yet we do have a particular glass, uh, an archetypal telescope that does give us uh, insights. It gives us remarkable glimpses into the deeper forces and fields that are constellated right now and uh, and the timing of their unfolding. And this is a great gift. It's a gift, I think, of the cosmos. It's 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 one of those things that actually um, the fact that the cosmos is both physical and um, spiritual and symbolic all the way through, all the way down, uh, and the fact that that its symbolic manifestations are such that to a certain extraordinary extent, they are intelligible to to us human beings. Um, that's a that's an ongoing reality that I know I personally experience as being a kind of affirmation. Despite all the uh, despite our crises, despite everything that we can doubt about the human experiment and our our uh, place in the in the cosmos and uh, on this earth uh nevertheless there's something about the universe's relationship to us and our relationship to the universe in which um a symbolic communication a language uh the language of the of the soul of the world the anima mundi is 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 something that is shared uh between the macrocosm and the human microcosm. And that's a kind of affirmation of the existence of our, our species and even of our, uh, of our, our evolution taking the form it has so that we are, are capable of symbolic discernment of, of uh, archetypal recognition uh, and, and so forth. And that this is connected in, in an extraordinarily consistent and vivid way with the with the uh, movements of the planets and uh, the the Earth around the Sun, but how, how the the moving geometry of of the solar system uh, within which we're embedded is is also um, indicative of, of of a of deeper archetypal realities of of the unfolding dynamics, and so that's what I'm going to be sharing with you tonight. It's not a talk for specialists. Uh, it's it's for people who have a general interest and openness to this perspective. And while I'm while I'm going to be looking at the world situation and the collective psyche, um, some of what I what I want to say here this evening uh, might be helpful on a more personal level, and I'll I'll uh, address that towards the early part of my remarks here. So I'm one thing to keep in mind is there are so many astrological factors always ongoing and the planets are and the sun and the moon are are always you know present and um uh, expressing their being and uh the the archetypal dynamics are therefore extraordinarily uh, complex and multiple and uh, so we have this evening, you know, an, an hour plus uh, Q and A starting at the at the at the hour seven o'clock. Here we'll open up to to questions and discussion. But um, during this this first hour, I'm I'm basically going to be sharing with you what the the most important factors that have my attention now uh, and in the months and years ahead based on you know now 45 almost 45 years almost a half a century i was just thinking about uh this the other day 
Um, this work, this research emerged out of, um, well, in a way, a kind of, both a place and a relationship. The place was Esselin Institute in Big Sur, and a relationship was uh, Stan Groff and, uh, and I working um, together uh, for all these years to the right up to the present moment, amazingly. Uh, and it was 50 years ago, uh, today's what, February 8th. So exactly like four weeks from now, like March 3rd, that's the 50, that's the half century since I, I, um, Stan and I first met the first night I got to Esalen and our friendship began our collaboration, uh, uh, so much I've learned from him and, uh, so much I have appreciated about, I mean, many of you here to tonight may, may have been part of our, the many, many classes that we taught at CIS in several different uh, locations over, over the years, going back to 1993, 94, that school year. Uh, and uh, so um, that's that's where this research uh, began. And at this point, uh, there's such a large database, as it were, a body of evidence uh, that have that has helped um, me and th those who, with whom I work uh, closest in the archetypal astrology, archetypal cosmology community, uh, research community. The, these are, are are the most significant, the the most um, uh, helpful categories of of astrological phenomena, astronomical phenomena that we that we have found over the years. So that's what I'm going to share with you tonight, the ones that are really in uh, um, that I see as especially relevant to understanding our time. As I've done in the past, it's always important to uh, just a few background pr principles we all need to keep in mind. The planets don't work as if uh, they're, they're not affecting us in a kind of linear causal mechanistic way um as if they're simply uh material objects that in, influence the earth like gravity or uh, electrical electromagnetic radiation something like that it's it's rather i think much better understood in the kinds of terms that uh plotinus the the, the great uh, platonic neoplatonic philosopher from uh antiquity or 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 Jung um both have described a phenomenon which Jung named uh synchronicity which is basically that it's not so much that in this case that the planets are causing in a efficient causality kind of way what's happening in the earth rather there is a an ongoing correlation an ongoing synchronous uh ex um connection correspondence between the movements of the planets and the um and the movements of the of the archetypal dynamics of human experience and as as plotinus puts it uh everything is interconnected all things breathe together uh and everything is uh symbolically meaningful it, it, that's why one can tune into intuitively if one has those capacities and cultivated them or there it's, it comes as a gift uh but the the intuitive capacities can work through many many different modes of divination and so forth but this is a form of uh esoteric understanding that that is not dependent on clairvoyance or or psychic capacities but more the simply the the a, a well um developed or well cultivated uh symbolic sense which is something that you get from reading good poetry or or uh watching uh experiencing great art and so forth it's 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 an education in in symbolic discernment and uh, that capacity when it's wedded to our astronomical knowledge um a kind of humanities and sciences synthesis it can give us many many different um 
insights that would otherwise not be not be available to us. Um, so, uh, secondly, it's not a deterministic system. It's not fatalistic. Uh, and this has to do with the very nature of archetypes, and archetypes are they're powerful. They're numinous. They 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 shape and inform things from both the interior psyche and the outer world. Uh, they can be seen as gods and goddesses, uh, as the ancients experienced them. They can be seen as platonic uh, archetypal principles, transcendent cosmic principles that inform the whole cosmos and are at the foundation of reality itself. They can be seen as Jungian uh archetypes in a more psychological sense um and uh freudian instincts and so forth they're they're all relevant to our our uh understanding except it's important when we take in the psychological side of it that we always remember that they transcend the human um archetypal powers seem to be more cosmic more theocosmic uh or cosmotheistic um grounded in the cosmos and the more than human world, as well as speaking to the human world. And they can be, and it's the very nature of archetypes that they can be enacted in many different ways uh, uh, that are all faithful to the core essence of, of that principle. And at the same time, uh, open to multiple enactments. And this is where human responsibility and human freedom our agency plays a crucial role in uh, in the um, a, the expression of these archetypes in our lives. So astrology, as we're describing it here, it's not they're not astrology is not concretely predictive; it's archetypally predictive, and therefore, the more consciousness uh, we bring to the table. Um, the more self-awareness, um, the more courage, the more intelligence and imagination, then the more freedom and skillfulness that we can we that we can um, have to participate in the uh, archetypal forces coming through us and around us. Um, one last thing, and that is, we're looking. The, the evidence is basically uh, founded on uh, uh, research that has shown one where many, when we're looking at world transits in particular, but this is also true for personal transits, <clears throat> that there will be many phenomena uh, that uh, happen within a, a, a particular time that all bear the imprint, the, 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 the features of that particular of a particular archetype or archetypal combination. And uh, so the correlations we're looking at are, are synchronic in that sense. Um, but they are also diachronic because um, these are, are always part of larger cycles. And when the cycles come around to like a new conjunction of two planets, then you get a, um, a cyclical uh, expression activation of the same archetypal powers, uh, but um, in a way that is uh, related to the new time, the new situation, and everything that's happened in between, but at the same time bears a an intelligible relationship to what happened uh, uh, the previous time and the previous time before that. Uh, and this is very important um, for any kind of rigorous research to be able to uh, track these things because otherwise the astrologer has too easy a tendency to, tendency to say, well, this means that uh, because you've got this planet and that sign and that house and according to their particular uh, house system and uh, so zodiacal choices and then all sorts of other uh, schools of astrology and so forth. Because you have this, then... Uh, we can expect that. Um, and I think r really what ast astrology as a, as a um, 
the, the community of astrologers is 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 basically moving towards taking on the the same level of mm, scholarly and research uh, rigor that we expect of of all graduate students and uh, fellow our colleagues as professors and so forth um that it, where it's based on correlations that aren't just read from a textbook or something that one has a personal impression of, but it's based on uh, a great deal of data that tracks back diachronically across the centuries, um, as well as synchronically all converging many at the same time across in different nations or whatever or cultures at the same time, uh, but all bearing the same quality. In addition, there's a cumulative um, dimension to this where uh, everything that happens uh, during a particular transit is coming in a in a larger context that uh, is it's building on it's it's informed by and and then when that comes into expression then that becomes the foundation along with everything that has already happened for the future so it's 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 cumulative and it's evolving there's an evolutionary quality to it and i think the evolution um that there are deeper archetypal patterns at work uh through the entire um historical not, not just in terms of relative to particular planetary cycles, but also a kind of larger evolutionary telos or, or um, deeper meaningful un unfolding is taking place that has certain intelligible patterns to it. Uh, a, a larger narrative is unfolding, and I'll address that towards the end today. Okay, so I think that uh, covers everything um, that I most wanted to say by way of intro. Uh, and so there's two major conjunctions among the outer planets that are happening uh, right now or, or will be soon. In fact, each of these is really kind of more on, have not yet gotten to their, 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 their fullness. And, um, the, these two world transits are the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and the Saturn-Neptune conjunction. Um, and I think these are, before I talk about the world, um, ramif the ramifications for the, the world as a whole, geopolitically and so forth, uh, it's very useful to know about on a personal level with these particular transits. So the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, um, it's a it's it's uh it's probably the most fun among the outer planetary combinations um and uh archetypally has sort of the, the greatest uh buoyance um now th this one first came into orb we work with with the conjunctions uh work like 12 to 15 degrees uh seems to be operative for world transit conjunctions of the outer planets. Um, and uh, it first came, the conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus first came into orb, uh, as we call it, uh, last summer. Um, and it will go, and it is it always lasts about 14 months, basically right till next, this, this coming summer through uh, into this su coming summer. But this was an unusual... Uh, um, arc uh you know I, I you know i've described and shown you in, in the past with with diagrams of the of a kind of bell-shaped curve of increasing intensity frequency of of correlations and archetypal phenomena and then gradually um declining as it moves farther away and out of orb uh this one's been not like a kind of symmetrical uh bell curve because um it 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 came into orb last summer and it got I don't know what within about ten degrees or so, uh, but then uh, went re retrograde, and it and it's only now coming into February and March that it's really coming into a tighter orb, and then it will be really cooking in in April and May of this year, still in orb uh, June and July, but 
what this means is that while there's been you know certain things that we've have been visible over the over the last nine months or so are a little less than that seven months uh but the um the 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 major uh impact in terms of uh, correlating with the with a really tight orb and moving into exact alignment is still to come and it's all kind of clustered here this spring uh and so um i wanted to start with this one because all of you out there who have been thinking about um you know starting a project or you're involved in some kind of creative project uh, already, um, this is a, an extraordinarily fruitful transit for world transit for, uh, it kind of seems to be increase the level of both creativity, uh, innovation, um, breakthroughs, and also uh, historically, is the most remarkable among um, all uh, transiting influences among all the uh, planetary cycles. I mean, every 14 years, those planets come into conjunction and halfway in between, uh, they come into opposition, which is like the full moon moment of the cycle. And, uh, and then the completion of the cycle and beginning of a new one with the conjunction, which we're in now, uh, it is dazzling the the quality of um, the correlations over the centuries. I mean, there's those of you who are interested, and in, some of you may have read Cosmos and Psyche. There's 70, 80 pages uh, of of just extraordinary um, milestones, cultural milestones, artistic breakthroughs, scientific breakthroughs, technological, uh, but also spiritual, psychological. Uh, quantum leaps, um, uh, peak experiences, and so forth. And uh, it's interestingly, the the original peak experience, as it was named by Abraham Maslow, that uh, it was based on two peak experiences he personally had, both under the the Jupiter Uranus alignment. And same thing with uh, like the I say quantum leap, but the history of quantum physics. Precise, is is remarkably connected to from its beginnings with Max Planck in 1900 to the big uh, breakthroughs uh, in uh, in the 20s when it, Jupiter and Uranus were conjunct again 1927 28 Bohr does the principle of uh, into, of um, complementarity uh, Heisenberg does the principle of of indeterminacy uncertainty principle and um, Anyway, th those also correlated with the, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. If you have a a, a project happening, you're, you're thinking of writing a book, um, you're thinking, or it could be, you know, your dissertation or whatever. I mean, use this period, these next few months, there, there just tends to be um, more uh, kind of liberation of the, of the creative impulse available. M moreover, it's also a very good time for, let's say you've been working for a long time and things are just about ready. This is a very good time for launching into the into the public world. <clears throat> um, so if if you were to read the the many, many correlations of you know the artistic breakthroughs, the scientific breakthroughs, the the historical, uh, successful um, political, social uh, uh, rebellions and awakenings that have happened from the Bastille to, uh, um, you know, to you know, Woodstock or or the the moon landing or uh, the the fall of the Berlin Wall and Velvet Revolution or uh, in personal artistic uh, lives the the um, Beethoven writing his first great. Beethoven's symphony, the 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 Eroica, uh, under Jupiter Uranus conjunction, um, the uh, Joni Mitchell brings out her her first albums, uh, etc. It's it's just remarkable how many um, artistically and scientifically culturally significant creative 
milestones coincide with this uh, with this cycle. It's it's a joy to to trace to track. You know um, how consistent it is and how it works across many fields. But I want to emphasize that it also um, some of these things are visible historically. Uh, um, more readily in in the moment or soon after but in many cases they're what i call like hidden births they take place without uh it's it may be like it might be when a big creative project begins you know when james joyce starts to write ulysses um yes he publishes uh portrait of the artist as a young man um under the conjunction but then he starts to write ulysses at the, at that time, uh, and it initiates a whole nother um, uh, quality. Uh, oh, what um, the Harry Potter series begins publication in 1997 under the conjunction. Um, but a, a lot of artists are starting things, or 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 scientists or um, technological uh, breakthroughs are doing it quietly like Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak in their garage in Palo Alto starting um, their work under the Jupiter-Uranus alignment of 75-76 uh, 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 in the garage in Palo Alto. Nobody knows what's going to, at that time, what's going to come from it. So it's it's a hidden birth. So um, I'm, I'm mainly wanting to uh, encourage uh all of us to um, that particular wind that's blowing can be very, very supportive of 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 our uh, of our personal creative uh, work, and also um, our quest for greater um, understanding, freedom, expanding our horizons in various ways, expanding our consciousness. Uh, um, could be through travel. It could be through um, uh, sacred medicine journeys. It could be th through uh, um, reading uh, a, a book or or experiencing a uh, a new idea that is just really personally uh, liberating. Becomes a kind of milestone in one's own un own unfolding. All these ways are are uh, possible uh, with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So it's a um, it's a it's a uh, it's a field that we are in right now that uh, you you don't want to sleep through. you know it uh, there's a lot of other things happening in the world that aren't so uh, easy. Um, uh, but this one is one that at least at that level has a, it's a kind of, if, if you think of Uranus as related to that Promethean impulse of create of of uh, innovation, the rebel, the trickster, the liberator, the bringing new uh, light to humanity, um, etc., the fire that Promethe Prometheus brings to liberate humanity has many different sim meanings symbolically, obviously, and this is sort of like Prometheus crowned king. Jupiter elevates, expands whatever it touches, uh, grants success to it, uh, gives it a, um, a buoyancy, uh, perhaps a cultural magnitude. Uh, uh, and um, at the same time, the uh, what I what I also want to emphasize, though, is that every archetypal combination has its shadow. And um, that's true for Jupiter and Uranus as well. Um, the shadow of Jupiter's expansion, elevation, uh, um, is is uh, one where it could involve uh, inflation, um, uh, overexpansion, a kind of uh, mm, uh, inflated... Uh, confidence or pride or uh some form of excess uh and so there's a, a a need to really bring in um discernment with every transit that we go through it's not just um that's so that 
James Hillman was very good on how the archetypes, yes, they are the great enriching, the sources of meaning that enrich and uh, elevate our lives that that inform our our, our psychic existence, our, our imagination and so forth. And uh, they shape our experience in so, so many ways. But they are also uh they each archetype is a is a god or a goddess that <clears throat> rules its cosmos and uh it can uh this is hillman has and, and jung was very good on this too it it can take possession of one and uh it can um misleadingly uh lead one into certain directions excuse me while i Out of talking um so the so for example um dylan who's who's born with the jupiter uranus conjunction um himself that's his like unbelievably sustained creativity he has saturn there too so it's very sustained right into old age uh uh and i say that advisedly since i'm i'm a septuagenarian and he's he's uh uh an octogenarian um but dylan's continuing creativity is a kind of wonder to behold but uh he so he had this one sentence some of you some of you may remember from uh uh i think it's uh well it's from the album bringing it all back home um and where he says uh, the highways made for gamblers better use your sense take what you have learned from coincidence um there's a kind of a indication of a recommendation that we pay attention to synchronicities coincidences take what you have gathered from coincidence it's the universe is telling us something it's an invitation to understanding a deeper meaning but uh th that s sort of honoring of the gambler uranus prometheus it's a trickster it's a gambler it takes chances it uh it and jupiter both gives success and it also can give the impression or illusion of uh of success by giving one kind of like fool's gold or uh the 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 shiny apple the the to use the, the the term from um tracy chapman who just did that very moving uh return on stage for the the grammys the other night singing fast car uh so well with the with a country singer um anyway the shiny the shiny apple the 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 flash in the pan the superficial uh seeming seemingly uh successful but really shallow um ungrounded inflated uh, uh liable to be um liable to be deflated because anything that is inflated uh uh, too much is going to get deflated and that's where saturn comes in of course and and then we have a whole different situation so we jupiter uranus can be a bit dangerous uh i mean if if you're going to las vegas uh as i suppose a few people are this weekend um with the uh, super bowl um it's a uh yeah you'd limit 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 your your sense of uh great um success that you can have just so like maybe use a hundred dollars or something and see where it goes but uh people can get carried away with it and uh some of the really uh, extraordinary scandals of uh business people or you know entrepreneurs or all sorts of other people who just kind of expand way too fast or inflate uh, through their uh, persona their 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 public presentation and but the substance isn't there the foundations haven't been built the hard work uh 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 hasn't been uh, uh, 
accomplished so that there'd be so that any Jupiterian um, success uh, can endure. And um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but just in general, it's a uh, it's a it's a very special combination that, that you, you want to uh, it's a good time to begin or to search for, forward or to bring forth into the public any creative projects that you've been uh, gestating those of you who are working on dissertations and so forth I mean most this is a very creative community uh, that I'm speaking to tonight uh, and the world as a whole needs what this community has to share with it um, and do the hard work that will allow it to and what you do to endure uh, also to to be able to be communicated to people in a way that they can take in that takes that that's a labor uh, it's a discipline it's a kind of self transcendence that has to happen in, in the in the course of doing that but now's the time it's a it's a it's a very good good period to to carry forward i mean all of you are going to have personal transits of all different types that i can't know about because it's they're just specific to you and you could have all sorts of other uh artistic uh or other uh intellectual creativity uh transits happening including uranus might be conjoining your jupiter uh or uh over the next three years or something like that so um, but I'm just mentioning this window of the world transit that seems to have a collective uh, impact. Um, uh, you know, just even in the world of popular culture, there, there it tends to come through with like big wow events. You know, um, I think you know, like for example, when it was starting last summer, I think I think coming of uh, the release of Barbie. Uh, for example, and Oppenheimer at the same time, and Bar Barbenheimer, et cetera. That that was a, an example of that kind of Jupiter Uranus, you know, people coming back into the theaters, and then all the kind of uh, wonderful celebration of what what Barbie was uh, represented, and the and the creativity that was was in it as a as a film, um, and and Oppenheimer, uh, uh, you know, at a whole nother um, level. Uh, Taylor Swift's huge mega tour, you know, that's uh, very, very typical. And she's got that Jupiter Uranus natally right on her moon, as I recall. Um, uh, all the huge excitement, by the way, around um, around Taylor Swift and uh, Travis Kelsey's uh, romance. Um, it's so kind of appropriate that there is a Venus-Mars conjunction all this month and how front and center that you know it's kind of the coming together of the uh of the warrior archetype and the um goddess of beauty and love and the arts and so forth um it's uh the artist and the athlete um it, it it's a kind of uh heroes camos or sacred marriage uh you know or romance in this case uh of its own and that venus mars conjunction in the sky uh really really uh, fits perfectly for that um you know just how how that's been constellated right now also you have um just all the ways in which uh oh, i was thinking it's the venus mars conjunction happens to be conjoined with pluto in a triple conjunction and pluto has so much to do with politics and power struggle and um very interesting how uh, that relationship seems to have also activated, particularly the uh, the, the the far right in the United States in a in a kind of um, humorous, if it weren't so crazy, uh, way. So, okay, I'm realizing I need to move forward. One could you can see each of these are so rich that I uh, I have to kind of pull myself away and go to the next one. Okay, so. There's a Saturn-Neptune conjunction. That's the other big conjunction that's 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 happening, and it's it's just hovering. It's in the it's it's kind of out of orb now, or just coming into like twenty degrees and then fifteen. Um, uh, but they're 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 both in the same 
tropical sign, Pisces, which is very kind of Neptunian in quality already. So there, there's already signs of it evident. Um, and Saturn, of course, is so different than Jupiter. It's it's uh, it's that which uh, limits, structures, uh, gives solidity and stability, uh, uh, but it also you know challenges and causes problems and holds back uh rigidifies um and uh it has very much to do with this concrete world while neptune has so much to do with the with the spiritual and imaginative uh world and our 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 uh uh the invisible world um that that which is transcendent which is um symbolic and and uh subtle and tangible uh it's well saturn is into you know kind of clear boundaries and 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 solid foundations neptune is much more uh uh porous and and timeless and immaterial and infinite and uh, uh interpenetrating and and so forth but you put the saturn neptune uh conjunction coming together is a very very complex one and it Okay, I should mention now, um, this one is coming really, it, it, it this year, it's starting to come in this summer uh, more, more strongly, um, but it's not, it's still not going to go, uh, it's really going to reach its intense period in 25 next year and the year after, 2025 and 26, and then it leaves uh, the orb 15 degrees in uh, around April of 2027 in that spring. So it's really more the next couple of years uh, after 2024, but it is in the field right now. And uh, people who are sensitive to these things can pick it up, can see the signs of it. Uh, that sense of mm, um, Anxiety tends to get increased uh, during Saturn Neptune periods. Suddenly, I mean, the problematic side of it, which can be hard, uh, is it can be psychologically and spiritually challenging. It can be a kind of dark night of the soul, and it can increase um, anxiety about the future, et cetera, which God knows we have plenty of reasons for anxiety. But it also can trigger, because of Neptune's relationship to the ideal and the transcendent, um, and Saturn's relationship to the hard factual realities that we have to deal with, uh, that dialectic uh, can cause a fair amount of um, uh, tension that can result. One of the ways it can come through is, is a certain um, sense of discouragement about how far we are from the ideal, or there can be a, a kind of fatigue, uh, or like I've seen like democracy fatigue uh, is one headline that I saw uh, not too long ago that that fits this, uh, or or the or this um, the a sense of uh, being uh, that there isn't uh, that there isn't. There's no grounds for hope of a real disillusionment of uh, uh, a sense of um, being uh, demoralized. Now, I have to say, even that quality of demoralization and disillusionment um, can be can have its very positive effect. Uh, and I I'll mention something because when it has coincided with periods of wars, including both World War One, World War Two. Uh, uh, when the Saturn Neptune came in in the like the 1916 to uh, 19 period, uh, or again, that was one conjunction, again, it came in during the like 1943 to five, 43, 43 to five period. Both of those were the last years of the of the world wars, and there is a kind of feeling like we're in a quagmire or it's, or it's not going to like, there's, there's a kind of exhaustion that can lead towards the ending of, of, of the war. Uh, that was very true in world war one. It was also true in Vietnam under the Saturn Neptune opposition of the early seventies, 71 to 73. Um, 
uh, also with the Iraq War, uh, 2004 to seven, when again, Saturn uh, came into, that was the uh, opposition, as I recall. And these are all periods where, I mean, with World War II, there was a, a very long, I mean, just, I mean, all the nightmarish qualities of those last few years, I don't have to bring up of World War II, but it did end uh, in a way that um, where there was a, a, a kind of clear uh, victory uh, with all morally ambiguous as it was. Um, but the these other examples ha had this quality of uh, of a kind of battle fatigue uh, that finally overtook those people who were in charge of the war and 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 a kind of with withdrawal from from wartime and you know we we've got two major wars uh, that are in the front of all of our consciousness right now in Israel Palestine and in Ukraine and um, it'll be interesting to see how th that unfolds. But in general, I want to just talk about how in the on the positive side, the conjunction of Saturn and Neptune is very good for increasing our capacity for focused consciousness and for calm concentration, um, a kind of nuanced uh, subtlety of, of awareness, uh, deeper insight, psychological reflections, very much... Uh, uh enhanced <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> enhanced by the saturn neptune conjunction it's extremely good for spiritual practice for meditation for prayer for um following a uh, a spiritual tradition um an ancient spiritual tradition uh, i mean think of somebody like um the dalai lama who has Saturn Neptune very potent in his chart? The opposition is right on his moon, um, and he, you know, clearly has gone through great, uh, you know, losses of the ideal, like the loss of, of the spiritual world that he had that that uh, of Tibet, and um, and at the and and his engagement with the suffering of of humanity, and at the same time, um, his calling for. Uh, the importance of of meditation, of of ad, uh, adhering to a spiritual practice, uh, uh, cultivating compassion, cultivating um, the the kind of virtues of the bodhisattva, hard work at Saturn in service of the spiritual, um, uh, which is Neptune, um, or, or or of the poetic, of the imaginative, of the ideals in our lives. Um, also bringing the ideals into concrete actualization. That's so important. See, that's Neptune. In a way, it's bringing heaven to earth, Neptune to Saturn, Saturn ruling the concrete pragmatic realities of our lives, economic, social, political structures, and so forth. And Neptune being uh, our ideals, our aspirations, which are so real uh they 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 shape our lives they're not just uh figments but it is, or they they don't have to be just figments and at the same time uh it's it takes something to bring those into uh concrete expression um uh, it, i think of somebody like uh martin luther king you know who had the saturn trine neptune in a grand trine with jupiter and how his whole life was like bringing that ideal, I have a dream, and then bringing it to against great uh, suffering and dark nights of the soul and weeping, um, and 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 sustaining that. Uh, so uh, you know things like like yoga, um, uh, perhaps even you know living more monastically might might be uh, or a serious engagement with. With spiritual teachings of of any kind, uh, of uh, mystical devotion, also a focus on uh, um, healing and health, both mental and psycho, psych, mental and physical. You you see many people who work in the healing professions as therapists, as as physicians, and so forth. Hospice work. Um, uh, have Saturn Neptune aspects, uh, the care for the suffering and those in need. 
the flip side of that is that people under the, the Saturn Neptune alignment, which, as I say, is, well, it's just kind of getting underway later this year, or this summer. It's more, I'm kind of preparing you for like 25, 26. It can be something that, um, uh, it tends to be a time where more people feel the need or the and the willingness to go into psychotherapy uh to to work on themselves psychologically uh they 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 feel that this it, it's now now time and so that's very very typical under saturn neptune um periods another thing that is uh quite helpful with this aspect is well again it's bivalent so you've got See, Neptune is not just our spiritual ideals and all these positive things. It's also our, um, Neptune is our delusions and our illusions. And it's, it can be spin and propaganda and, uh, and myths in the uh, kind of rationalist point of view that if it's not factual, it's just, this is the myth of uh, the flat earth or whatever. And um, uh, that's, um, in that case, Saturn brings in a a, a very sort of healthy uh, challenge to to the illusion and um, to the to the misinformation or disinformation to the that's so even something like disenchantment, which is you know so much of what the CIS community is about uh, and really this whole talk is based on an enchanted view of the of the cosmos that it's the cosmos is and and sold um and this and the sense of the disenchantment of the world that has been part of modernity is is uh, see, is rightly seen as as uh very problematic um but remember that one can enchant in in the in a positive way but one can enchant with a uh, with a spell that puts one in a kind of uh, del delusional world um, that's very convincing. And um, people who have Saturn Neptune aspects often have a, a a a desire to kind of meet face that and uh, um, show the the illusion for what it is uh, now. So, I mean, a lot of the great theorists of disenchantment in the ways that we might be like Weber and, and, and Freud and uh, 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 Foucault, you know, had Saturn-Neptune aspects. Uh, Virginia Woolf, you know, very sort of skeptical uh, uh, understanding in certain ways. And at the same time, um, uh, we can see how uh, valuable a service it is when it shows us how we may be there 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 could even be valid neptunian realities that we're seeing but we may be also projecting certain things from our own psychological needs and so forth so uh that's that too is a um let me just see i got uh okay so we're getting yeah i'm I'm going to go just a few more minutes here before uh, opening up to to questions because I, I I did want to bring a, a few other things here. But um, if you just think about how some of the great uh, masters of pulling back the illusion uh, that is done by propaganda or political spin or disinformation, somebody like uh, like uh, Jonathan uh, uh, Swift or uh, or the the Daily Show, John Stewart, uh, who was born with it, and how he consistently year after year was bringing that. Okay, here's what the politicians saying. Here's what the corporate uh, propaganda is saying, and here's the reality. And and. Uh, so that sense of irony and skepticism uh, uh, th that can play such a helpful role in the in the uh, in a society, and it's quite appropriate that after several years of not being quite a few years, uh, uh, John Stewart is starting. Uh, he's coming back to the Daily Show, I think, once every week, starting next Monday, as I recall. So there you've got. It. He's 
we're getting into that Saturn Neptune field and his that's very typical that a person who's born with that aspect tends to really shine under it. Um, uh, the way I mentioned with like with uh, Taylor Swift, you know, um, at, at this, this year. So uh, I think that's all I'll say about that um, because I want to just say a few words here about, um, uh, yeah, the, the U.S. is going through two very big uh, planetary uh, transits, one called the Pluto return and the other called the Uranus return. Uh, the Pluto return is very rare. It only happens every what, 248 years. So this is the very first one the U.S. has had. We don't have a pattern to look at in the past. You can see it with like the Roman Empire, which went through two of them and 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 had quite a bit of, uh, uh, it was very clear the the Plutonic uh, dynastic power struggles that happened uh, quite quite uh, violent in that case, and also the uh, and 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 the other sides of 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 the Plutonic, which I'll get into in a second. Um, both times, uh, including the, the the second time, which marked the end of the Western Roman Empire, uh, were quite significant historically so uh then the uranus return it's also happening for the united states this is our third one and uh the first one happened you know it's an 84 year cycle the first one happened you know 1776 uh right up to the first one happened in the civil war and both that kind of tremendous both rebellion and change and and forging of a, a new birth of freedom, as as Abraham Lincoln put it, uh, and the and the and the freeing of enslaved people, uh, that was uh, you know a huge huge. I mean, basically, it kind of revised the Constitution. It it, it moved it in in a fundamental uh, direction towards greater uh, democratization and fulfillment of its ideals. And then the uh, the the next uh, Uranus return happened uh, in the course of uh, World War II and the emergence of the U.S. A, a, as a world uh, superpower. So those are those are two huge uh, Uranus cycles, and we're now we're just beginning the Uranus cycle. So uh, the Uranus return, rather. So the 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 Pluto return we've been in for a while. Uh, it's a big big transit. If you think about how long Saturn returns last in our personal lives, everybody gets it, the first one between age 28 and 30. And it's pretty much for most people, that whole period from 28 through 30, uh, right up to the 31st birthday. So that that whole uh, period um, of, of three years tends to be deeply reflective of the Saturn archetype and Saturn return the the I won't go into all the ways or else I won't get to my uh the, the the big points I want to make but many of you know about the Saturn return and it you could see it's 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 not something that just comes on like a light switch for a you know a, a a day or a month or something like that it's it's a it's the ending of a huge cycle and uh and the orb within which one um, sees the Saturn return expressing itself is very clearly bigger than most m than most uh, personal transits. It it is it, from the beginning of it to the end. It's more like about twenty degrees before exact. Uh, usually, when one around when you turn twenty eight. Sometimes people start even when they're twenty seven, depending on uh, where where Saturn was when you were born, but. Um, generally it's 28 to 30 and it's basically about a 20 degree orb. Now, if we extend that to the, the big Pluto and Uranus cycles, um, and here in, in the case of the U S, uh, that you can see like Pluto, we're basically in the middle of, we're right. We're it's, it's climaxing right now. I mean, it's, it's peaking. It's been really tight. Uh, it, it um, 
is overall it's been going on for uh, about 10, a, a little more than a decade, and it will, has a decade to go, but we're right uh, at the center of it now. So that's a big bell curve. Now, why am I saying something about the U.S.? Uh, yes, many of us here are are um, North Americans, but uh, and citizens of the U.S. But many of you aren't. I know that some are are listening in 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 England and 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 elsewhere, uh, Canada, Australia, and that's the the thing about the U.S. is I, for for better or ill, and often the latter, uh, the U.S. has a tremendous impact on the world, especially since the last uh, Uranus return. Uh, uh, and it has an outsized influence. And the, the things that happen with our political situation um, has an enormous ripple effect or domino effect as it goes out into the, into the world. And we just see it right now so vividly uh, happening with uh, in the Ukraine, for example, and uh, NATO and um, uh uh, in Israel, et cetera. It's a, it's a big deal. So that's why I'm addressing these national transits. Uh, and it, so it kind of affects the zeitgeist of, of, of the whole world in the same way that if you're in a, in an intimate relationship with somebody, you live with somebody who's going through a powerful transit, you know, you, it's, it's part of your field too. Uh, and um, it bears attending to. Uh, or requires attending to, um, so uh, it's. I, I think um, we're we're looking at uh, a period here where um, there can be. I mean, really, the whole Trump phenomenon is so plutonic. Um, it's kind of like Hades. Uh, as I think I mentioned a few years ago, it's like Hades opened up its jaws and pulled in uh, Persephone into the uh, uh, <clears throat> into the uh, maws of the underworld. Uh, and, and, yeah, kind of like a like a mafia type underworld. Uh, truly, uh, very typical of that side of the of the Plutonic. Um, but just more generally, it can be like the decay or destruction of, of existing conditions uh, and beliefs and structures, and it, which and it requires a really deep transformation and a renewal of life that comes out of that uh, decay and destruction. I mean, we all feel that about. I mean, clearly, the U.S. is um, at a, a crossroads such as it has not faced other than in the Civil War, really, uh, which is also when actually the first Pluto hard aspect to itself happened and the lead up to that, too. Um, also, the the typical is the power struggles with dominating individuals, plutonic individuals or institutions, clash of wills, um, encounter with destructive energies, uh, either inside us or outside us, also inside the nation, as well as outside the nation uh, geopolitically, it's part of the field. Um, there can be also a kind of unconscious attraction towards dangerous situations or environments that are are uh, uh, marked by life and death uh, urgency, crises of survival, um, uh, um, where <clears throat> sort of like the shamanic descent into the underworld is literalized in a certain way. Um, uh excuse me so and uh i think in addition you have a greater sense of empowerment strengthening of the will personal renewal sense of one's life being moved and transformed by deep evolutionary energies um we really need to draw on that i i've quoted from in the past the beautiful passages from from Joanna Macy about uh, the the importance of realizing that our efforts on behalf of of the Earth community are are rooted in um, something that's uh, as old as the Earth, you know, four point six billion years, or as or the cosmos of fourteen billion years. It's uh, we we 
we're, we can be drawing on those 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 deeper, powerful evolutionary energies. Uh, also, the draw towards becoming closer to the forces of nature. Um, really felt that with the uh, terrific uh, windstorms that we had here in rain um, the, the this weekend and going out in in between rain. But while the wind was so terrific and, and we had no power here, I'm so glad, knock on wood, that the power is. Uh, stayed on um right now but just walking through the through the winds and the intensity of it, it it's it's felt very it was very fulfilling that's very plutonic pluto also has so much to do with the shadow and the human shadow and to illuminate the dark aspects of uh, a personality within the human psyche to face the shadow uh without being overwhelmed by them um uh the U.S. is having to face its shadow as never before. I mean, even like, geez, when, remember when Obama was uh, 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 became president, elected, and then that night, you know, where he's in in Chicago and he walks out with his beautiful family out into that out into the stage there, and you know, with his his uh, their dark skin just shining in such beauty uh, and the the red, white, and blue behind. And, you know, I remember a French uh, political columnist said, the U.S. has taken the moral torch, has seized the moral torch. And we uh, here in France and elsewhere need to att pay attention to that. That sense of, of, of such like a, a great moral advance had been made. And, and yet right at that moment, um, the shadow is uh begins its reaction and plot plotting its its overthrow I mean, it's like a um yeah it 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 it, it has uh great dramatic uh, uh qualities at at work here um but facing the shadow as all of us psychologists know is absolutely crucial to any kind of true uh psycho spiritual growth and that's also true for a nation um, to grow beyond its illusions of, and like the, the the persona that we like to see ourselves uh, as embodying of of being uh, the land of the of the free um, and uh, equality and justice and so forth and how far we have to go and how uh, dark has been the the shadows of of our not living up to those ideals finally that pluto return it gives us it can really gives us deep insight into the mysteries of death and rebirth um and so uh that too is is up for us and can be very transformative uh i'll just finish now by saying that the the uranus return which brings in that promethean energy and I mean, it's a, the fact that they're happening together. Now, the Uranus return is a shorter, it's more like about 10 years, shorter compared with the Pluto return, because Uranus moves uh, uh, much faster um, than Pluto. But so we're roughly, we're, we're right now at the beginning of a roughly decade-long transit. Um, it'll be exact around 2027, 20, 28, but it's just... Uh, coming into into uh play right now and and then we'll be kind of moving beyond the uh 20 degree mark uh, in the early 2030s but the 2020s um has been dominated by uh the pluto return already and now the uranus return is kicking in which brings in a more potentially liberating quality but also sudden changes and rebellions and um civil disturbances and so forth that could be uh could be dicey, um, but it is not impossible that if the better angels of our nature uh, are able to rise to the occasion and somehow the center holds in these next uh, crucial months and, and, and years, um, I'm enough of an idealist to think that, uh, I mean, the U.S. has had very positive influences on the world apart from its shadow which has been immense uh, apart from its uh 
yeah, I won't go into all of it, but it also is, has had uh, an inspiring, benevolent effect. It's not for nothing that so many people want to come and be here. Uh, and um, it's not impossible that in the course of these next few years, there could be a a, a, a genuine rebirth uh, and a genuine um, uh, liberation into a, a, a new uh, moral order that has in which we can participate in in both a, a greater geopolitical uh uh domain of 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 compassion and uh also relating to the 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 entire biosphere and how much hard work and um uh yeah, stamina and creativity is going to be uh, necessary to because so much has been set in motion already. The momentum is so powerful, and we have uh, the the stakes are 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 very high. So um, I've I've taken us a little longer than I wanted to, uh, but uh, let me just go to um, the uh, the questions here that have been asked and let me see where i should be looking at those um uh izzy could you tell me where where uh yeah like there i see the q a and it says okay Oh yeah, oh yeah, there. Okay, I for some reason I was only seeing other your your communications earlier, but okay, here we are. Um uh the um all of these questions, um let's see, your previous okay, here's one. Your your question your your previous talks have focused on the movement between Saturn and Uranus. Can you share something about where that stands now and the impact on current events? Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the planets are always, um, are always, or, or the archetype, or, or the planets are always there, uh, and so are their archetypal, uh, uh, energies. And so it's not, uh, something that only gets activated when there's a particular transit happening. They're always there. In fact, as they go through their cycles, they're always coming into different relationships of like minor aspects and uh, major aspects and uh, so forth. Just there's always a relationship between any two planets so that the Saturn and Uranus are always in a uh, dynamic um, connection. But when they do come into major aspect, that's when they tend to, those energies tend to come most vividly into into expression and then and then that sets the new uh foundation for the the continuing uh narrative thread of our of our lives now um there is so while saturn and uranus i mean they they just moved out of the square last year i mean it was like it was that sudden unexpected uh, uh, attack, uh, Hamas uh, in in Israel, in the beginning of that uh, of, of the current situation there, that was like the sort of like the last part of the of the Saturn Uranus, which can often bring in uh, major um, both sudden disturbances, sudden civil disturbances, uh, uh, but also um, uh, unexpected crises and so forth even though that crisis has been going on since the, the birth of Palestine and Israel in 1948, uh, uh, which ha ha that would be a whole nother lecture to, to, to discuss um, that situation. But in general, uh, we could say that we are always having to navigate between the forces of change and the new and the future, which Uranus represents and the forces of the past and um and of order, and of tradition, uh, uh, and of restraint versus, because it's not all, like sometimes Saturn is seen as bad, and Uranus is good, particularly in a kind of countercultural community like ours. 
But uh, the um, those who want to just get rid of uh, any uh, of the constitutional limits on uh, the expression of of a person's political power while in office to have total freedom that's a that's a that's an expression of the iranian uh promethean archetype um <clears throat> and saturn brings in a wise counsel of no there's limits this is a nation of laws and here uh uh is where we we need to draw the line in order to preserve the the uh the greatest freedom for the for the largest number of people rather than um uh the unfettered expression of freedom somebody who doesn't want to have any regulation environmental regulation of their their corporation they want total freedom and so the saturnian impact of the EPA or or environmental regulations is a Saturnian thing, and uh, so I'm I'm trying to show you how uh, we always need to keep these two in a kind of mutually self balancing um, dialectic, uh, and and so they that's that's it. same thing with uh, Saturn and Uranus have so much to do with the two generations or, or the older generation and the younger generation and um, both generational influences, young and old have crucial um, contributions to make to, to our, our moment in history. And uh, at, at, at every, uh, that's why it's so important to have um, both honored and also listening to each other and in interaction with each other. Uh, so, yeah, those that's a few words about um, Saturn and Uranus. Um, now, most of the, like all of the other questions that are currently up there have to do with uh, planets entering signs like uh, Pluto into Aquarius and um, uh, or the um, Neptune into Aries. Uh, <clears throat> or the Uranus uh, return going into Gemini uh, and so forth. Um, the signs, I believe, are, uh, are, are very meaningful and they color the energy uh, in significant ways. But we don't have the same love. For, it's, it's a more um, diffuse uh, field of meaning uh, or of tendencies or of archetypal qualities that each of the, the zodiacal signs um, indicates. And it, it's not, uh, you know, in terms of saying with the same confidence that I could talk about, okay, here's what tends to happen um, when we have Jupiter-Uranus conjunctions. And here's what we've seen historically under Saturn-Neptune conjunctions. But, uh, or or the Uranus Pluto square that we've just come out of, or the trine, which I didn't get into uh, now, but is is an ongoing um, uh, influence that is part of our our field right now. Um, we have such <clears throat> excellent historical data going back uh, for centuries. We we have both the planetary. Uh, both the, the astronomical data is there, but also the historical data. And we, uh, there is universal consensus among practicing astrologers about what the meanings are of all the, uh, both the planets known to the ancients, um, right up through like Saturn, uh, well, Sun and Moon, of course, but like Mercury through Saturn, visible to the naked eye. But then also the 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 planets discovered in the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries, known as like the the classical modern planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. We have such um, uh, a, a a universal consensus among astrologers as to their meanings, and um, that's not as true for the signs where there's two different zodiacs, the sidereal and the and the tropical. Um, that's even more. Uh, multiplicity uh and controversy with the with the um with the house systems 
and or with the overall styles of astrology. But one thing that astrologers do agree about is the planets and their their meanings and particularly when they come into the major geometrical alignments like the conjunctions the opposition and so forth that i've been discussing tonight the, that's where we have such excellent um uh data and those of you who've read cosmos and psyche know that uh the evidence is there uh many people who were not open to astrology or who were uh you know interested but didn't know how relevant it was to something beyond uh a personal reading um that uh is a um Cos cosmos and psyche is a, has a body of data that is quite rigorously set out systematically like every uranus pluto alignment uh a major major um axial alignment or uranus neptune um or saturn pluto or jupiter uranus going back for centuries and, and just how consistent the um correlations are uh, and expressive of the multivalent richness of these um gods and goddesses that uh, can come through in so many ways and yet are clearly themselves so we have that um we have that evidence, that foundation to be able to uh, speak about uh, things as I have been tonight that I feel much more comfortable about uh, the 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 research on doing a systematic study of, you know, Pluto going into Aquarius um, uh, systematically over many centuries uh, or of, of all the, um, say, outer planets going into the different signs. It's it's much more kind of anecdotal and uh, kind of almost textual interpretation rather than uh bringing in that kind of research foundation that i see as a as crucial for the future of astrology where it will in a sense it's a synthesis of the humanities and the sciences where you you you've got the um the rigor of of, of the sciences and of course the astronomical knowledge with the uh uh, capacity for symbolic discernment and uh, uh, all the uh, epistemological capacities that uh, the humanities uh, cultivate, and so that's uh, that's um, what I why I stay with the uh, planets and the major aspects as what I can speak about most, I think, reliably and helpfully with you here. And then there's one final question here. Um, uh, oh no, there are two, two final uh, questions. Um, thanks for for all of this uh, for fifty years. While you have shared so much poignant, compelling research on planetary cycles and the transits to fam famous people, what is your sense regarding synastry? Does it have an equal degree of relevance? Okay, syn synastry is where um, you compare two birth charts uh, to each other and show how the um, geometrical alignments between the planets in the two charts uh, relate. Very definitely uh, valuable, invaluable. I mean, just you, um, it's it's such a rich source of insight for relationships. And I really uh, recommend uh, going into it as, as much as you can. Um, if you think about how transits uh, as the planets move through the sky, the personal transits, they, the planets are uh, crossing certain positions in our natal chart and activating it in a certain way that reflects those both the transiting planet and the natal planet. Well, when you come into a deep, enduring relationship with somebody, that person's birth chart is in some sense transiting your birth chart and vice versa. So, uh, when you when you um come into that relationship uh you you are essentially taking on a long-term transit uh that reflects uh what uh how their chart I I interacts with yours so yes it's a very v valuable um uh area of study and then there's one last one here since the astrology is helpful for birthing new projects that's the jupiter uranus conjunction we started with are you working on anything new? 
Yes, indeed. Um, that's one of the reasons that I uh, uh, am now Professor Emeritus instead of um, currently teaching. As One was to, along with uh, Brian Swim and Robert McDermott, um, I wanted to uh, make room for the younger generation who's just so brilliant to uh, enter into their fullness as as uh, as teachers. Um, but I also had certain writing projects that I've been gestating for years, uh, not able to complete while teaching, which is a you know major uh, focus of of time. And so now, yeah, that's what I'm hoping to do in these in these coming months and um, Deo Valente uh, years. Um, hope hope that I can bring forth what's in me because yeah, I feel like I've been building towards something that. Uh, I know what I want to say, but I'm not a fast writer, and I I um, try to bring forth things in published form that uh, will that I can be proud of, you know, five, ten years, uh, uh, twenty years down the road. So it takes me a little while to do it to the degree of uh, of uh, error that I that I want to bring to it. Okay, so. I think um, we are more than out of time. I've uh, I hope that uh, something has th that I've shared with you th this evening has been useful to you. Um, I think I may just end on a this beautiful passage that um, is one of uh, my daughter Becca Tarnas's uh, favorite from uh, Lord of the Rings. It's so relevant to our time. I've mentioned it a few years ago. It's when Frodo and Gandalf are 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 discussing the rise of of darkly threatening forces and the empowerment of evil that's just threatening the um, the peaceful life of of the of the Shire. And um, Frodo says, "I wish it need not have happened in in my time." And Gandalf replies, "So do I." And so do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. And that's uh, that's certainly uh, relevant, I think, to where we all are today. Okay, thank you very much. I hope uh, I, I hope uh, this has been useful in one way or another for for, for you. Take care. Um.